Hello and welcome to Sleep Hypnosis Weekly dot com. Uh, my name is Jason Newland. This is deep. No, this is not deep. This is Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. I also do other podcasts one of which is Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis and also Let Me Bore You to Sleep and they're also kind of aimed at kind of the same thing as this podcast aiming to help you to get a better night's sleep or a better day's sleep depending on when you do go to sleep because there are millions of people that work night shift or are just up at night so try not to generalize and because I'm kind of one of those people that generally up quite late through choice only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and I do believe this is number 10 so my aim is to release a new recording every Friday and which I've done so for the last three weeks including today Previous to that, uh, I hadn't made a new recording for this podcast for a long time, but due to its popularity, I've decided to continue to make weekly recordings, and so that's why I do it, and ho hopefully, hopefully, it is of benefit to you so please let me know if you like what I do as I said uh, I've got other podcasts um, the home for all of my podcasts are Spreaker.com saying that the podcasts are shared and are available all over the internet via lots of different podcast hosts such as Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google, Play, I think, um, Stitcher, it's just so many different ones as well as everything for this podcast is available on the sleephypnosisweekly.com website so you've got a choice of different places and I know everybody's got their own place that they like to listen some people would choose Spotify because it's one of the biggest platforms for listening to music and podcasts uh, as well as iTunes of course which is kind of pretty much the biggest one for podcasts but then you've got Stitcher and you've got you know lots of, lots of different places where or CastBox is another one and I was looking at the stats And it's like something like 90 or 89 percent of people that listen to my podcasts listen on tele on their phone on the mobile, and a tiny percentage, the next one down, is on the tablet, and then the laptop, and that's like minimal amount. And then one's on uh, a speaker, you know, sort of like the 
Amazon speaker or uh, Echo or whatever they're called, the different, you know, Siri and all that stuff. And that'll grow as well, the more the more popular they become, I suppose they'll be used a lot more. So people will be listening. You know, maybe you'll be listening via the the Amazon Echo or the Google thingy uh, play thing <laughs> speaker, I forget what they're called. So that's that all out of the way. And also if you if you would like to support me to help me to provide this free service, you can make a donation if you choose. It's paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. Paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. And that's it. So I thought considering I make seven probably about twelve plus sleep recordings a week and then I make these so I kind of sometimes I'll be making a recording and thinking I oh, wish I wish I'd uh, wish I could just put that onto the sleep hypnosis weekly but I don't want to repeat stuff I don't want to just share the same recording because I believe that every recording should be unique uh, for each podcast you know regarding deep sleep whisper this one or the uh, let me bore you to sleep so I do sort of keep them separate but I am going to copy, I'm not going to copy, I'm just going to kind of copy some of what I said, the idea behind some of what I said uh, in one of my deep sleep whisper ones. And this is really just about what we say to ourselves, what we expect to happen. what we think about in our minds and this is around sleep around sleeping around that time when you have decided to go to sleep and that doesn't start when you lie down on your bed the process of sleeping starts before you do that and you may not realize that until you think about it now for example I'll be going to sleep I'll be going to bed after I've recorded this I'll record this I'll upload it I'll put it onto the podcast share it and then I'll be going to bed. So as I sit down, as I am now, in my big black squeaky chair, I can hear the rain outside. It's been raining non-stop pretty much for the last 24 hours, which is okay because I'm inside. Okay for me that is. And it's good for the grass and the trees and all that stuff I'm sure. And the fields. And I think about going to bed. So let's say on an, on an average night or morning. I might just be, you know, sitting in my chair thinking I wish it stopped squeaking so much when I made recordings and then I think about going to bed and then I've got a routine a standard routine 
and I'm imagining that most people have a going to bed routine and I'm sure it's different for different people but for me my routine is well actually as I'm lying or sitting that you know maybe sitting back in my chair I'm thinking I want to go to bed now but I can't be bothered to move because I'm comfortable but I really want to go to bed and I imagine how good it's going to feel to sit on the edge of my bed take my socks off feel the air on my feet turn the light off and then just lie down on my back on my bed and maybe manoeuvre my pillow so that it supports my head and my neck in a way that's comfortable and I'll maybe move my hips around a little bit because I have some lower back issues so I might like to try and stretch a little bit and sometimes my back will, will click my lower back and my hips will just click because maybe because they're straightened out or they're relaxed and that can feel quite nice and I'll just feel the air on my toes and my feet and I'll do that regardless of what the temperature is of course if it's nice if it's warm uh, then I'll spend more time like that but if it's cold or it's a bit chilly indoors it's winter or whatever I'll, st I'll lie like that for you know maybe a minute and then I'll put the clothes the bed clothes over me the quilt to keep myself warm but I imagine before I do all that how good it's going to feel and how tired I'm going to feel and how relaxed I'm going to feel lying down on my bed knowing that after 30 seconds maybe a minute maybe a few minutes I'm going to lie you know turn onto the left side of my body and if the room temperature is nice and warm or comfortable I'll cuddle the, the quilt so I'll put my right leg over the quilt and I'll lay on my left side and that will be a signal to my body and my brain or mind my neural system, neural whatever, the whole thing. That it's time to just drift off to sleep. But at the same time, I don't try and force it. Because sleep can't be forced. relaxation can't be forced it's something that can be encouraged something that can be worked at or allowed to happen or expected to happen but not forced and you know sometimes what I've noticed is sometimes it's useful to be able to get into the frame of mind where you just don't care whether you go to sleep or not it's unimportant and even though we all know that sleeping is important we all know that it's also 
the most natural thing in the world for us to do. Just like going to the toilet, just like feeling hungry at certain times of the day and eating, it's a natural thing. And your mind will shut down at some point and you will go to sleep. Eventually, anyway. Because your body and your mind needs it. Which takes the pressure off. Which takes the that idea of I must fall asleep now. I must fall asleep instantly. It takes away that pressure because pressure and relaxing they don't sit together they don't they don't live together they're completely different things you can't sit in a hot and a cold bath at the same time you can sit in a warm bath And when you fill the bath up with water, cold and hot, you maybe put your hand through the water and parts of it maybe feel warmer than others. But when you get into a bath, it can't be hot and cold at the same time, the water. And of course you can feel you can be in a nice warm bath but be in a very cold room so your your upper body may feel a bit chilly and the rest of your body is nice and warm but that's a separate thing that's just a temperature thing in the room but even then you've got the steam from the water and being in a warm bath also makes us sweat to the point where the temperature of the bathroom changes to become more in tune with the temperature of the water In the same way when you're in bed, lying down, you kind of become part of the bed. And it sounds a bit weird, but you kind of become as one with the bed. And I don't mean to sound all zen, but just, it's just you in the bed. Of course, if you have someone else in a bed with you as well, but it's them and the bed and you, or you in the bed and them, but the bed is so important because it supports your body for the entire time that you're lying there. And that bed, if anything was a trigger to fall asleep, the bed is that trigger. The pillow underneath your head, supporting your head and your neck, is that trigger to just relax completely. It's as if in some way the 
the pillow just sucks the thoughts out of your brain so that your brain naturally starts to slow down so it gets to a a certain level a certain speed of thought that then allows you to cross that bridge into sleep you could even think of it as being one of those bridges you know the ones to lift up to let ships through you know tall ships so the bridge lifts and for some people the bridge is down all the time so they can just walk across into sleep really easily, really quickly and other people maybe the bridges open a little bit you know it's lifted up a little bit so there's a gap so they can't quite get across and that gap can be the equivalent of maybe the brain and the mind being a bit a bit active a bit more active than is useful but it's also really important to thank your mind for being active thanking your mind I'm feeling grateful that you have a mind that's active that you're able to think that you're intelligent because that's what leads you forward in your life but there's some things you don't need to think about when you're asleep in the same way if you went swimming you don't need to think about cleaning your car when you're in a swimming pool although the water might remind you that is of course if you wash your car in a swimming pool but it's not something you need to think about I'm not a swimmer really I can swim but you know it's it's not something that I would do as a hobby so my focus would be to stay above the water and to get to the other side and that would be my focus but at the same time if you compare the two situations if you're lying in bed thinking I don't want to be awake I don't want to be kept awake I don't want to stay awake and start thinking about what you don't want that's the equivalent of me thinking to myself I don't want to take in lots of water I don't want to get cramp I don't want to you know have to have someone come and rescue me I don't want to go underneath the water that's if I'm thinking that I'm not going to have first of all I'm not going to enjoy the experience but there's less chance I'm going to reach the other side without having to grab the side I'm always at the side of the thing I never go in the middle without having to stop and maybe ask for help or take a break
and that's a bit more of an extreme thing than laying in bed because laying in bed is of course very safe but then so is swimming in the swimming pool but if if you were focusing on what you didn't want that's what your mind, your unconscious mind takes on board. And that's what it thinks you do want. So it doesn't understand negatives. It just understands what you're picturing, what you're imagining, what you're thinking. So it's really important to focus on what you, not just what you do want, but to make it stronger and turn it into what you expect, what you want and what you expect. You want to sleep deeply, you expect to sleep deeply and naturally and easily and I quite like the idea of the pillow just soaking those thoughts out of your mind Because in reality, you're not going to lose any information. You're not going to wake up and forget your own name or, you know, where the kitchen is in your, in your house. You know, all that stuff's still there. It just means that you've given yourself a break. You've allowed yourself to have a rest. that you're no longer thinking about things that are no longer relevant to that experience. It's kind of similar really if you think about it. If you're really hungry and you need to eat. But you put off eating. Because you're going out on a date with someone. Or you're meeting up with friends. But then it turns out that there's no food at the place that you're going to. And everybody else has already eaten before they went out. And you've got someone trying to talk to you and trying to have a conversation with you and your tummy's rumbling and you're hungry. And it's very hard to enjoy the experience because you're hungry. Isn't it better just to eat when you're hungry and focus on what you need to focus on? Because when you're lying down in bed, you don't need to focus on anything. Because there's that, that bridge that we were talking about. The more you just lay there and relax. I don't expect anything other than just to fall asleep. You don't need anything else to happen. Eventually, 
that bridge will come down so you can just walk across it into sleep easily naturally in fact you don't even have to walk across it you just naturally slide into a sense of sleepiness And it's easy. And it's natural. Because sleeping, as we've said before, is the most natural thing in the world. As I said before, it's as natural as farting, but more socially acceptable, I guess. It's something that you can expect to happen. And even though there may be a period of time where you've had issues with getting to sleep and, you know, whatever it may be for your situation, you've slept hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times. Unless you're two years old. But even then you have slept. Probably the air. Because babies sleep constantly. Don't they? On and off. So if you're in your 30s. Or 40s. Or 20s. 50s. 60s. 70s. You've slept thousands and thousands of times. You basically should have a PhD in sleeping. You have a doctorate. We are doctors at sleeping. All of us. And I know some people may say, oh, but that's just words. And you're right, it is words. but it's also the truth. It's about what's useful. Are the words useful? And not only are the words that I'm saying, are they useful? What about the things that you're saying to yourself? What about the words that you're saying to yourself? Only you know what they are. Because if you're lying on your bed and you're saying to yourself, oh, I'm not going to get to sleep, I'm never going to sleep, I'm going to wake up feeling crap in the morning, I'm never going to sleep. Uh, well, child, you ain't, you're not going to be going to sleep, are you? You know, because you might as well have someone next to you nudging you the whole time you know I'm nudging you every five minutes or ten minutes are you asleep yet are you asleep yet and that would be like getting into a big bath and you know there's a piranha fish in there somewhere. You're not going to have a very relaxing bath, are you? Or more likely, hopefully, you wouldn't get in the bath in the first place. Because of what you expect would happen, and possibly likely would happen. I'd definitely be wearing some metal underpants. 
I call it into a bar for a piranha. I'll probably have a full, like a night costume, you know, and all the whole, everything metal. Even cover my toenails. And my ears. So what do you say when you're in bed? What do you say before you go to bed? To yourself, in your mind? What do you expect to happen? What do you visualise? What do you imagine? What do you see? In your mind's eye? Before you even get ready to go to bed. Because what you say to yourself, you might as well just say the sentence, whatever you say to yourself is true. Because that's what your unconscious believes. If you tell yourself that you're not going to be able to do this, or you're not going to be able to do that, or whatever, your unconscious mind believes that. Because it trusts you. Why would you lie to yourself? Which is a good question. Why would you say horrible things to yourself? That's another good question. The answer is you shouldn't. And my command for that is stop doing it. Start saying some nice stuff to yourself. You know that if you had a baby and you brought that child up and every day you were telling that child horrible things telling it, you know, negative stuff about itself. That child will grow up to be an adult that believes what you said, believes that about themselves. Well, they'll grow up to be a child that believes it as well. They may grow up to be a pensioner, an old, old man or woman that still believes that about themselves not realising it came from somewhere else. Of course, none of us would do that. But that's what we're doing to ourselves. And that's something that I've been saying for many years when it comes to internal dialogue. Would you say that to a small child? Would you go up to a small child in the street and say to them you're not going to sleep tonight you're not going to be able to get to sleep tonight and that's a very mild version of some of the things that we may say to ourselves So if you wouldn't say that to a small child, why would you say it to yourself? Why would you say something that harms you to yourself? And telling yourself something like that regarding sleeping is of no use, but it's powerful. So then you reverse it and you start telling yourself that you're going to sleep easily. That you're a good sleeper, that you've done it thousands of times. You've fallen asleep thousands of times. You basically have a PhD, you are a doctor. 
of sleeping. You are an expert. There's no one else on the planet better than you at sleeping. No one can beat you. No one is as good as you at sleeping or better than you. You're a doctor in it. You're an expert. It's just maybe lately you forgot that. Or maybe you haven't had, in the past you haven't had someone like me telling you that and reminding you that you are an expert at sleeping. And you don't need to think about it. You just expect it to happen. See, if I go outside right now, I don't, I know I'm going to get wet. Because it's raining. And it's raining hard out there. I know that I'll get wet. I'll expect to get wet. But it's a factual thing. I will get wet. That's it. In the same way when I go to bed. I will fall asleep. It's in the same place. It's a factual thing. When you go to bed. And you lie down. Your body relaxes. And you'll fall asleep. Just the same way that every day the sun rises. Regardless of whether it's cloudy, the sun is still there above the clouds. The sun rises every single day. And you may say, ah, oh, but what if you're in Greenland or somewhere like that where the sun rises for six months of the year? I would say it's still rising somewhere else. The sun is always rising, it's always there. It doesn't actually rise, does it? The sun doesn't move. You know, it's us that are moving, it's the world, the planet. The sun is always there. Even when it's dark, the sun is always there. And you always have the ability to fall asleep because as long as you've been on this planet the sun has always been there and as long as the sun is there you can fall asleep it's just nature you were born to sleep easily And sleeping easy and calmly and relaxed it really is as simple as just expecting it to happen. Just as I know, if I went outside, I'd get wet. Because it's natural. It's the natural thing to happen. Which is why I'm not going to go outside. But if you go into the rain, if you go outside in the rain, you get wet. You lay that down on your bed, you go to sleep. something that you just expect to happen and there were times in your life 
when it was the most natural thing in the world. You went to bed, you fell asleep. Even on those nights where you didn't want to. For a lot of children, Christmas Eve or the night before their birthday. Or maybe the night before summer holidays. And the child may be excited and they don't want to go to sleep because they want to stay up to hear if they can hear Santa and his sleigh and the bells landing on the roof. Or they may be really excited because they want to they know they're going to go on holiday and well, it's their birthday and what they're going to get for their birthday. Are they going to get that that cactus that they've always wanted. What child ever wanted a cactus? But hey, that's my childhood. I'll let, I'm going to need to let that go. I was nine years old. I wanted a bike. I wanted a bike. So, even then, you fell asleep. Even when you wanted to stay awake, you were in bed. And what you do when you're in bed? You fall asleep. So imagine how much easier it is for you to just drift off when you're not trying to stay awake. You're not trying to go to sleep. You're not trying to do anything. Because trying is not necessary. There is no trying involved. Just like you don't have to try for the sun to be there. The sun's going to be there anyway. You don't have to try for oxygen to be available for us to breathe because it's there. There's no trying. You don't have to try. to push the blood around your body because that happens naturally no trying necessary and even though there's a pigeon trying my patience <laughs> pigeons actually talking to me asking if I've got a, a brolly it can borrow but I've told him don't disturb me when I'm making recordings so he'll have to get wet so there's no trying involved And the thing is with these recordings is everyone's different. Every single session is different. And my voice and the sound of that pigeon, the sound of the rain, all that's happening right now will never be repeated. It's a special moment in time. 
that can change the way that you experience the process of sleeping. changing the way that you expect to just fall asleep naturally and remembering that idea that you're a doctor of sleep something that maybe no one's ever said to you before you are a doctor of sleep Doctor of sleep. You have a PhD in relaxing your entire body and mind. Because it's happened so many times during your life so many times naturally you have felt completely relaxed maybe many of those times have been whilst listening to my voice and many times maybe whilst listening to music or by just sitting there Relaxing. Or maybe doing something else that you find enjoyable and relaxing. Something that calms your mind. And when your mind does feel calm, it's like there's a space. That's how I feel it, it feels like. Like there's a, an expensive space where the mind somehow feels bigger. I suppose it's a bit like having a big hall. in a big, big room or a big empty theatre and there's no one in there and you're standing on the stage and it's just so relaxing and you can feel confident to just sit there on a chair knowing that nobody's watching nobody's interested at what you're doing it's no one else's business because you're just relaxing and sleeping And you have all this space. Because that's what we have when we're asleep. Infinite space. That's what we carry around with us. All our lives in our mind. Infinite space. Millions of times bigger than the planet that we exist on you never run out of space in your mind and it can be so calming when you realise that 
when you choose your mind can just be completely calm not wanting anything not needing anything just feeling good feeling relaxed feeling at peace within yourself not needing anything not needing to think about anything feeling at one with yourself at peace calm and sleepy to one and you can drift even deeper now ten slate sounds of the birds send you even deeper into comfort nature the 
just naturally sleeping. Two. 